Our next speaker joins us from the Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation, where they've been working for many years to improve access to care and prevent teen pregnancies through their partnership with the South Carolina Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy. <clears throat> I'm pleased to introduce Erica Kirby, Senior Research Analyst and Grants Manager, to share their efforts with us today. Thank you, Catherine, and good afternoon. Um, I represent the South Carolina Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation, and as uh, Ms. Kepler referenced earlier in her presentation about the role of foundations in supporting teen health, um, our next few minutes during this webinar will provide South Carolina's examples and some of our activities in promoting teen health. The vision and mission of the South Carolina Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation is to bridge health and health care. And specifically, we promote and support healthier South Carolinians, particularly the economically disadvantaged, by supporting solutions to address gaps in health care and serving as an agent of change to support innovation and value-added public-private partnerships. We have a number of different investment strategies that you see in front of you. And for the topic of this webinar, specifically looking at teen health, we will um, mostly focus in the investing in South Carolina's children and then also in improving health and health care quality and value as we have done some work in utilizing uh, quality health improvement in initiatives. The teen birth rate in South Carolina, this is a map um, that covers a period of 2002 through 2013 for teen birth rates among 15 to 19 year olds. Since the early 1990s, teen birth rates in South Carolina has fallen by 54%, which is a huge accomplishment and certainly a great success story for our state. Yet we also do recognize that there is continued um, work to be done. And as part of this decline in birth rates, we have looked at um, different age groups. So we've split apart the 15 to 19 year olds into two categories, 15 to 17 year olds and then 18 to 19 year olds. And this was very uh, revealing in terms of um, looking at how resources are allocated, what interventions to employ, and how to really target resources. Um, amongst the 18 to 19 year old age group, 74% of these teen birth rates occur in this age group. So we certainly do recognize that with roughly three quarters of the teen birth rates occurring in this age group, that was very telling as a foundation about where to look at investing resources and time and energy. I think it's also important to note that, again, given this progress, we still do rank 12th in the nation of uh, our having a high teen, 12th highest teen birth, birth rate in the nation. And then I think it is also important to reference repeat pregnancies. 25% um, of all teen births are repeat, and then this number increases to 30% amongst the 18 to 19 year olds. So why do we as the Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation see this as a good investment in teen health? Um, again, as noted earlier, our, our vision is to bridge health and health care, and so we certainly view the investments of health, but then also the non-health factors that influence health, such as income as well as educational attainment. So we view investing in teen health and teen pregnancy prevention. From a health perspective, teen mothers have higher rates of low birth weight babies and infant mortality than mothers in their 20s. Compared to older mothers, teen mothers' risk of adverse health outcomes were 20% higher than a preterm birth and 15% higher in terms of infant mortality. From an educational attainment perspective, only 38% of teen mothers will receive a high school diploma by the age of 22. So again, we certainly see the um, short-term impact as well as the longer-term impact of educational attainment. And children born to teen mothers are less prepared to enter school and score lower on both reading and math tests. From an economic perspective, 
South Carolina spends $166 million annually on costs associated with teen childbearing. And over 60% of teen mothers receive some type of public benefit within the first year after a child was born to a teen mom. So we see these, these three different vantage points as all critical and certainly pointing as to why we should make investments And, okay. So in, I will quickly go over some of the, the investments that we've made in the past as well as present and perhaps where we look to go in the future. From the foundation's perspective, in the past we have funded um, different sectors, we funded different organizations, um, we have worked within a school setting, we've worked within community setting. Um, we certainly have supported Nurse Family Partnership, which, which includes an emphasis on the, the repeat pregnancies. We have worked in the clinical setting, be it through the public health agencies, um, looking also at the safety net providers to include the federally qualified community health centers, and their work with teen-friendly services that was previously described by Dr. Decker. Um, in 2009, we actually decided to take a deeper dive into this notion of the 15 to 17 year old versus the 18 to 19 year old. And this study was conducted <clears throat> by the South Carolina Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy, which is our statewide organization that, that really leads um, teen pregnancy prevention efforts and does a fantastic job of both providing data, providing training, and the expertise, the leadership, and the vision of, of how to address teen pregnancy in our state. And this project really was intended to look at the data and to develop strategies for the 18 to 19 year old age bracket. And really to look for um, opportunities to increase access, um, opportunities to um, make connections for teens to achieve um, their high school diploma if they were not able to obtain in the traditional uh, um, time. Also looking at the social norms and attitudes and, and beliefs amongst the 18 to 19 year olds. Um, with this age group, you know, they are, are kind of closing one chapter of their, um, their traditional K through 12 and then as they are transitioning into younger adulthood, it was important for us to know what their belief systems, their attitudes, as, and um, expectations were such that we were able to use that information and further invest in different pilot projects and interventions and strategies based on their beliefs and where they were um, at this age. One of the current projects that we are funding now is with the South Carolina Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy. And this is a quality improvement project based on the IHI Learning Collaborative with the Plan Do Study Act model, focusing primarily on teen-friendly clinics. And Dr. Decker has just briefly described the many elements of a teen-friendly clinic. And this grant opportunity, we find it is very innovative and unique in so much that um, for each of three years, there are four plus uh, clinics going through a process to do this rapid cycle quality improvement in order to become more teen friendly, such that these teens are able to have a text line, um, they're able to have more um, constant contact with the providers, they are able to go into a facility in which they are more comfortable, which will increase their likelihood of, a t of going to a teen clinic, and then as Dr. Decker had mentioned, it's just being in an environment that they feel that they have the confidence and the support of the staff to ask questions. Another aspect of our project is also looking at the communications as well as the messaging of, of how do we really message this, this um, importance of, of the right time given a person's um, um, reproductive health plan and being able to support that individual in their um, state of readiness. So 
So most of our work um, has really culminated and of recent is now being guided by the Accelerating Progress Report, which is the equivalent of our state's um, state plan to address teen pregnancy. This was convened by the South Carolina Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy. Um, uh, many partners came together and it culminated in the development of various strategies and indicators, recognizing that while South Carolina has made great strides in decreasing the teen birth rate, we, we still have miles to go on our journey. And so we wanted to identify how to accelerate that progress. Um, so as noted, this document contains the next steps to, to really build on our past efforts, our lessons learned, um, to maximize resources and to actually more so target resource in communities that need to perhaps have an additional um, investment. While the state level rates have gone down, we do know that certain communities um, may need more resources. And so this document and these conversations reveal um, uh, disp disparate rates among urban versus rural communities, as well as different ethnicities within our state. And so this collective impact approach in developing this plan was really based on a looking at a combination of burden as well as teen birth rates. And so we view this as a great roadmap for our state to continue to invest, not only from our foundation's perspective, but other foundations and other partners to come together towards a common agenda to invest in teen health. Thank you.